So I am going to review soap notes here and documentation. It's something that we work on throughout the program, and it's something that you will be doing throughout your career in the clinic. So we started in PTA 101 in your first quarter, and at that point, you have no idea, right? Nobody has any idea. And as we go through the procedures classes, we start to work you into writing full documentation like you will in the clinic. Clearly every place you work is going to have a different method of documenting um, slightly, but it's all based on a soap note. And so we start you off on that so you can go into any clinical setting and adapt to their method of documentation. So the learning objective for this is to be able to accurately document PT interventions in a soap note format in a timely manner. So that is one of the other things that we are working on throughout the program is we are trying to um, get your documentation more and more efficient. So you get to the point where in real life in the clinic, um, you might have five minutes to do your note. So you should be able to write a full um, accurate soap note do all your charges in five minutes and get on to your next patient. So um, there's there's the goal. So you're going to be writing soap notes for all the patients you treat in the clinic and all of the fake patients you treat in the lab. Um, so for, for each case study or lab practical that you do in your procedures class, you're going to be provided with information something similar to what you would see in the an, an initial evaluation for PT. So as a PTA, we're never doing the initial evaluation. We are coming in at the earliest, we're coming in on the second visit um, and often maybe not until third or fourth visit. Um, and we're gonna use the information in the PT initial evaluation um, to know what the plan of care is and um, what we're gonna do and how we're gonna document it. When you get a case study or lab practical in the lab, you are going to have to imagine some of the things because we don't have real injured patients in the lab. So your lab partner or whoever's acting as the patient is gonna see the information and they're gonna have to know what symptoms they need to report. Um, so I think that a lot of students, and myself included when I was in school, have a little bit um, of difficulty with this because there is a bit of creative writing involved. When we're actually documenting in the middle uh, in the medical record, there's no creative writing involved. If you didn't do it, you're not writing it down. And if you don't write it down, then you can't really say that you did it because it's a legal and medical record. Um, but in the classroom and in the lab, since we don't have real patients with real injuries, we do have to make a few things up. And so what we ask you to do when you get that case study or lab practical study, we ask you to imagine what the patient would be like at the next treatment after that initial evaluation. So, um, I struggled with that when I was in school. As soon as I got to writing notes for real patients, no problem. <laughs> well, you know, you still have to learn how to do it efficiently, but um, it's a lot easier to do something and then write down what you did than to imagine what you would have done and then write that down. But anyway, that's, that's what you're gonna do. And it's a really good idea to think about your soap note in terms of what's in the plan of care, what am I going to do towards this plan of care and how am I going to document it? So that's a good way to think of it. So I'm going to go through sort of each section of the soap note and talk about the um, how we're going to grade you on the soap notes, the rubric for the soap note, and um, what should be in that or what could be in that section. So the subjective section, um, it it's what the patient tells you, basically. It's their subjective sec section. For the rubric, it needs to contain reproducible, functional application related to the patient's main limitations. So um, their chief symptoms or their current symptoms um, with a an orientation towards how are they limited functionally. So um, their chief symptoms might be, um, oh, I have shoulder pain. Um, their current symptoms might be, well, today my pain is five out of 10, and that's their current pain level. 
Um, the patient's goals might be, well, I need to um, be able to trim the trees in my yard and I can't do it right now because I because of my shoulder pain. Um, the functional status or activity levels. Um, well, previously before this shoulder injury, I was easily able to trim the trees in my yard um, or but now I can't do it. That sort of thing. Um, or if somebody tells you that they don't do anything, they're sedentary. That's relevant to the activity level. Um, their social history. Um, it could be that, um, well, my husband just passed away a few months ago and he and I used to trim the trees together. Now I have to do it all by myself. Um, so that that might be relevant in terms of that employment status um, will say, well, I'm a painter and um, I need to be able to lift my arms over my head and I can't go back to work until I can do that without shoulder pain. So that could be the relevance of employment status. Living environment, do you live in a house with a big yard? Do you live in a multi-level house with lots of stairs? Do you live in an apartment? If you do live in an apartment, does it, does it have an elevator to get up to your level? Um, general health status, so other health issues can affect um, their recovery and their treatment, um, social and health habits. Um, so whether or not they have, they, um, have people to help them, um, whether or not they eat regularly or drink water or anything like that, that can affect their healing, um, their health and medical history. So any comorbidities that are going on, um, response to their last PT treatment. So of course, as PTAs, we're never seeing people on the first visit. So a lot of times I ask people if I'm seeing them on the second visit, I say, were you sore after your initial evaluation or did you have any reaction to the treatment that the PT gave you? So that's relevant. And current pain levels we already talked about. So patients may tell you a lot of different things, some of which it's relevant to document and some of it which it's not. And then they also may not tell you a lot of things that you really want to know. And you might have to sort of ask some questions to bring out that information. So um, in the subjective section, you're not gonna put all those things, but those are things that you possibly might put. But the main thing is you wanna say, how does what they're reporting relate to their main limitation? So somebody's coming in for back pain and they say, well, I can only stand for about 20 minutes before my back starts to hurt more. Um, and I have to be able to stand for at least four hours at work. Okay, that's really relevant. So they can't stand for the amount of time that they really need to do um in and without back pain so that's the kind of information we're looking for in the subjective section and again you might have to ask the patient some questions to get the information that you need the objective session uh, section that is the measurements so um everything that you did in your tests and measures class that could be relevant um everything you did in um your acute care class the levels of assist, that could be relevant for objective. So it, um, what we really want in the soap notes that you're writing for class, we want pre and post measurements or observations that are meaningful to the treatment. So just a list of possibilities, and this isn't comprehensive, there could be other things, but sensation, strength, so manual muscle testing, balance, the amount of time they could balance on one foot, Skin integrity or skin inspection, um, if the person is using an AFO or an assistive device or um, has a prosthesis or something like that, that might be super relevant to note in the objective section. Vital signs, test results. So say you did the Berg balance scale, um, put, put the results in the objective section. Um, range of motion, um, goniometric goni metric measurements, um, posture, um, so there are different posture um, things that we talked about in PTA uh, 105. So as long as the posture information is relevant to their current treatment, um, if they have forward shoulder posture, forward head posture, and you're treating them for shoulder and neck pain, super relevant. Um, so you don't always have to comment on somebody's posture, but if it's relevant to their treatment, then that goes in the objective section. Um, level of assist for transfers, level of assist for gait. Um, the assistive device that they're using for gait, that goes in the objective section. Um, edema and girth measurements. Um, neurological testing like proprioception and cognition. 
and um, outcome measure results. So if you're um, using any kind of formal outcome measure, you put the results in the objective section. So what we're gonna be looking for in your SOAP notes in lab is pre and post measurements or observations meaningful to your treatment. So um, make sure you get those pre and post measurements. The treatment section is part of the objective notes, but of course the measurements are one part and what you did in the treatment is another part. Um, we want clear descriptions of interventions performed during treatment, including parameters and the reason that you did the intervention. So you don't need to do a big long narrative, but um, clear descriptions of what you did. So for each treatment session, you need to document what you did, the parameters involved, and why you did it. So um, say that you did soft tissue mobilization, where you did it, the parameters involved, the position of the patient, and you did it to increase circulation to promote tissue healing, the reason that you did it. So as we talk about each different modality, um, we will talk about reasons for doing it or clinical indications. So um, that's that's relevant to document. Um, the other thing you want to think about for the treatment section is what part of the plan of care are you addressing with the interventions you performed? So if the plan of care said um, to do a certain thing, um, you, you're going to say that you did that, hopefully you did do it, in the treatment section. So, um, and that is a way to bridge into um, what you're going to use for billing, what you're going to use for your CPT codes, um, because if you're supposed to do gait training, um, the interventions that you do in the treatment section should be relevant to gait training, and you're going to charge under gait training. Makes sense, right? So the assessment section is one that a lot of people struggle with. Um, and basically, we're trying to summarize the patient's response to treatment. How much cueing did they need? What improvements did they make during the session? What's the justification for how the patient benefits from the session? Um, it might include progress towards goals or limitations preventing patient from meeting goals. So you could say something like, um, with practice today, patient was able to perform a low pivot transfer with contact guard assist. However, their limited cognition may prevent them from being able to do this independently at home. So they were able to improve during the session, but if they're trying to do it at home without someone helping them, they might not be able to do it. Um, so just some possibilities of what you can put in the assessment section, the problem list, like what still is what is still a problem, um, improvements or progress towards goals. You can say um, patient has met goal of whatever the goal is, ambulating 200 feet um, independently or modified independent with a four-wheel walker. Maybe they, in order to get to the dining room in their assisted living facility, they have to be able to walk 200 feet with their walker. So that's a good goal for them. Patient's motivational level, um, saying that the patient's highly motivated to work towards their goals because they want to remain independent. That's relevant. Um, the short-term goals met, long-term goals met, reaction to today's treatment. So um, saying, saying that the um, patient had an increased range of motion, which of course you documented in your objective session um, after today's treatment or um, patient had other improvements after the treatment. Um, what's still lacking to achieve the goals? So um, the patient is still limited in full knee extension in order to achieve their goals. How is the PT intervention helping or benefiting the patient? And so a lot of times when um, insurance assessors and doctors and other people besides um, you and your colleagues are looking at these SOAP notes, they're looking at the assessment section because they want to say, how is PT helping this patient? Um, so if you think of it that way, the assessment section is, how did what you did today help the patient? How did it progress them towards their goals? What goals have they already met? What are they still lacking in order to achieve their remaining goals? The plan section is helpful and meaningful information for the next visit, including at least one specific progression of treatment. Um, so we, what we do not want you to write is we do not want you to write, continue with plan of care. <laughs> so you could say, um, 
continue with therapeutic exercise and progress a certain exercise by doing this. So you, I could say continue with therapeutic exercise and progress quadricep strengthening by adding an ankle weight at the next visit, something like that. So one specific pro progression of the treatment is what we're looking for in grading the SOAP notes. Um, plans for progress, um, specific plans for progressing an exercise. Um, the location of treatment, if it's changing. So sometimes um, the patient comes in with a referral for two different things and the PT decides, well, we're gonna work on one thing first and then we're gonna work on another thing once that is a little more resolved. Um, and so in their plan, they might say to do, to change the location of treatment for the next visit. Plans for further assessment. So if you say, um, assess Berg balance test on the next visit, that's a good one. Or if there's a progress new, do, do, sorry, progress note due the next visit, that's a great place to put it in the plan. So if, if you're doing the next visit and you're um, documenting information for the progress note that the PT will then write, um, you'll know. And if the PT is doing the next visit, um, they'll know that they need to do a progress note. Um, activities to try in the next PT treatment. So um, say I'm working with someone and we've been working on balance and gait, and they say, well, you know, the thing that I'm really having trouble with is um, keeping my balance while I'm carrying things in my garage. So I write in my plan, and they tell me this towards the end of the treatment, um, I write in my plan, um, practice gait and balance while carrying it next visit. So then I remember, that's a note to my future self. Um, the treatment progression, particularly if you're following a specific protocol. So say that the person had an ACL repair and the, the um, surgeon has a specific protocol. So at week six, they can um, progress to no brace and full weight bearing. I don't know if that's realistic, but I'm just making that up. Um, you're going to say progress to level four of protocol next visit, something like that. And you have that documented what that is. And discharge planning. So you might say um, one more visit to teach home exercise program after which we will discharge. Or um, discharge next visit, that's the other thing, like the patient's ready for discharge. You say patient has um, met all goes, goals for discharge and will continue for one more visit to learn floor transfer, that's another thing. So they're one more visit and what they're gonna do in that one visit. So one of my colleagues um, said something, we were talking about soap notes and, and she said, you know what I really wanna see in a soap note is I wanna see a, a list of what you did, how the patient reacted and what you want me to do in the next visit. I don't want a whole narrative about what's going on. And I'm like, okay, that's legit. Um, but I think of it as writing a note to my future self or writing a note to the next person who's going to see the patient. What do I want for the plan? What do I want to do in the next visit? And there are always times when you're working with people and you say, oh, we're almost out of time, but I'd really like to work on this. We'll put this in the plan section so you remember to do it next time. Because I don't know about you, but I don't have a perfect memory. And so I have to write these things down so I remember next time. So legibility, of course, is important. In the days of electronic medical record, thank goodness you can read people's notes. Um, you also want to make sure that even if you are doing electronic documentation, that it's easily understood. So something can be written out or typed out, you know, not handwritten and still be hard to understand. So just make sure your handwriting is legible and your writing is easily understood. You're using correct medical terminology and abbreviations, that's important. Um, don't make up your own abbreviations because nobody else will know what they mean. Um, and uh, correct present tense, so you're documenting, we're trying to do um, point of care documentation. So you're saying what the patient is doing right now, not what they did yesterday, but what they're doing right now. Um, no spelling errors, that's pretty important. Um, and the note needs to be signed and dated. So don't forget to sign and date your name, your note. Um, with charges, 
um, we have a billing section. And so the billing section of the note should include the appropriate CPT codes and the appropriate number of units. So in the, I have another little presentation on billing and I'll talk specifically about how you're figuring out the number of units. But if in your treatment note, you wrote down that you did gate training and here's all the things you did towards gate training, you know that you're gonna have a gate training CPT code. And if you did therapeutic exercise, and here's all the things you did towards therapeutic exercise, you know you're going to have a therapeutic exercise CPT code. So your all parts of your note should support each other, if that makes sense. So whatever you bill for, it should be in the treatment area. Um, whatever you wrote in the treatment area, you should bill for that. So, I mean, hopefully that makes sense. So really the goal is to have your notes be accurate and um, factually represent what you actually did and how the patient responded to it. So that's a good goal and to do it in a timely manner. So in the, um, I'll have another lecture, I'll talk about CPT codes and I'm not gonna talk about every CPT code there is out there for PT, but I'm gonna talk about most of the ones that we use in your first year in the program.